So, Julia, we've come to the end of April, schools going back after the Easter holidays. What message do you think schools want to share with parents right now? It's a real trial by fire. Um, and you wouldn't believe how extreme the responses are. We get extreme thank yous and we get extreme complaints and we get parents phoning us in tears. And we have to remind ourselves that everybody's stressed out. People are anxious and people are afraid and people are overwhelmed and the days are long. And so all the responses that schools are getting have to be taken with a pinch of salt. It is, um, it is a journey for the schools to work out how to provide for their specific parent and, and pupil body. So it depends very much on what the homes are, what the tech availability is in the homes. Although the DfE are now thinking about providing laptops to the least privileged children, which is quite an interesting um, move forward. But in general, you know, everybody knows that we don't want the children on screen all day long. And yet school is being provided on screen. And there are some, people, some schools who are asking their children to get dressed in school uniform to put in some screen, in, in, the, in front of the screen. And there are stories where the children are asking if they can go to the bathroom, but they're at home and their mom's in the room. So why are they asking? Um, people are finding it difficult to, to establish new norms and um, new social boundaries. Um, you know, what is an appropriate way for children to be dressed to show up for a Zoom lesson? And if we're in the park feeding the ducks, should we rush home for a Zoom lesson? And are these lessons mandatory? And are children going to be making progress during this time? Or are we just revising? Are we just babysitting? Are we just throwing the children busy work to keep them um, busy and to keep them off their parents' backs? And it makes school notice all the things that we provide as well as learning. We provide socialization hmm. and we provide babysitting. And that's a completely legitimate thing. We create a safe space for children to spend eight hours, eight hours of the day. And as much as um, in my utopian ideal, I would be playing in the garden with my children all day long and would have no need for a school provision. It's actually not true. We all get bored and we all need to feel stimulated and we need structure and we need stimulation and we need outside input. And all that structure and guidance that schools provide as experts, but also as another set of hands and another set of eyes. You know, we say it takes a village to raise a child. Well, we're cut off from our village and that's hard and it's hard for the children. And it's so interesting how we're creating these other ways to communicate. So how we're all using the WhatsApp um, you know, the funny things that come through on WhatsApp every morning are like a new lifeline of, don't <laughs> worry, we're all in the same boat, yeah? So just to make it clear to you, this week has been a nightmare for parents, for schools, and for children. We're supposed to have gone back after the holidays. We're all itching to return to routine. And we're trying to create a routine out of nothing. Now, those amongst us who are adventurers, and who are up for a new challenge are saying, well, the technology has been around for a while and actually we really can do this thing. And there are incredible resources out there. All the, um, the, the, the um, education resource providers have unlocked their material, which is so, so generous. So Collins and Oxford Reading Tree and Hamilton Trust and Twinkle, um, BBC Brightside is creating the most amazing raft of input and hopefully that will go on forever now, now that they've created it. Um, there's, a, uh, there's an organization called the Oak Academy where um, 400 yeah. lessons are going on, I think, daily. So um, there are all sorts of new things that people are doing to respond. And one of the things that I heard in a podcast on the subject recently is that the, the, the disruption that the world has experienced during coronavirus is going to accelerate everything. So a business that was failing is going to fail faster. And, um, and technology that was developing is going to develop faster. And um, 
if you think about it in that sense, well, education has been going in a specific questioning um, direction. For the last decade, people have been saying school is too industrial and we have to get more creative and more open-ended and more differentiated. There are amazing resources like the Khan Academy, which just invented the model of flipping the lesson, which means you pre-record the content so the children watch the content for homework so that when they come into school they work one-to-one -one with teachers and they benefit from the teacher's expertise and feedback that's an amazing change because what you've done is you've taken the content because we live in a content heavy society you can find anything you want on google but what you can't get is the one-to-one -one input and that one-to-one -one input is really what the teachers are offering so schools are working it out. It is a, a journey. It will be messy. And if we have a growth mindset and a good attitude and we are gentle and respectful with each other, then we will come out at the other end all skilled up for a whole new world. Yeah. But, but, but the responses have been extreme.